come together in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we prepare to celebrate Mass today, let us acknowledge our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with God our Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in Pope John the 23rd given, have given a living example of Christ, the Good Shepherd, to shine throughout the whole world, grant, we pray, that through his intercession we may joyfully pour out an abundance of Christian charity. Through Christ our Lord. By the way, Mass is offered today for Michaela Pearson. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. Jonah was greatly displeased <clears throat> and became angry that God did not carry out the, the, carry out the evil he threatened against Nineveh. He prayed, I beseech you, Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? This is why I fled at, at first to Tharsis. I knew that you are a generous, a gracious, and merciful God, slow to anger, rich in clemency, loath to punish. And now, Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord asked, have you reason to be angry? Jonah then left the city for a place to the east of it where he built himself a hut and waited under it in the shade to see what would happen in the city. And when the Lord God provided a gourd plant that grew up over Jonah's head, giving shade that relieved him from any discomfort, Jonah was very happy over the plant. But the next morning at dawn, God sent a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. And when the sun ro arose, God sent a burning east wind and the sun beat upon Jonah's head till he became faint. Then Jonah asked for death saying, I would be better off dead than alive. But God said to Jonah, have you reason to be angry over the plant? I have reason to be angry, Jonah answered, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned over the plant which cost you no labor and which you did not raise. It came up in one night and in one night it perished. And should I not be concerned over Nineveh the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who cannot distinguish their right hand from their left, not to mention the many cattle. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are merciful and gracious. Lord, you are merciful. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden, my soul, gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lord, for you, O Lord, are good and, and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, 
and glorify your name. For you are great, and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. We have two wonderful examples of prayer in the scriptures today. Jonah Jonah, who has such a personal relationship with God, it seems, and, 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 and talks to God. And, and then, of course, Jesus praying to God the Father, giving us that perfect prayer, the, the Lord's Prayer. I, I, you know, I, it, there are many reasons why we pray and why we need to pray. Sometimes uh, uh, it's as if we think we are trying to change God's mind and, and we bring our prayers and petitions to try to change God. I... I think the story of Jonah and the Lord's Prayer, for that matter, teaches us that prayer is not so much our changing God's mind, it's God helping us change. Jonah, you recall, ran away from God the first time. He told him to go to Nineveh, and he actually says today, today in that reading, this is why I didn't go the first time you asked me to, because I knew you were going to be merciful to them and you were going to forgive them. Jonah, uh, the Ninevites are his, ang his enemy. He's angry with them. He wants God to smite them. And when God doesn't, when God forgives them, gives them mercy, he's angry. And he presents that anger to God. And today, I think what God really tells Jonah in that whole story of the, the uh, gourd plant that, that grows, uh, and then Jonah's mad because God destroys the gourd plant the next day. It dies. Uh, the whole point is, I think, let's let God be God and not try to change God, but let God change us. We don't know how the story ends. I, I hope Jonah changed and became more loving towards his enemy and forgiving as God forgave. But the story of the Lord's Prayer, right? I think it's also another reason why we pray to know God's great protection and care and love. You know, uh, when Jesus used the word father, it was, it was revolutionary. I mean, for the Jewish people, never dared even mention the name God. And the word father, the one that actually Jesus used is something closer to daddy. He's talking about this intimate, loving relationship with God. And he shares that with us in giving us the Lord's Prayer, telling us that God is that close to us. We need prayer so that it can change us to be more like God, more loving. We need prayer so that we can come to know, no matter what happens in life, that we have a loving Father, a God who always cares for us. We honor today uh, uh, Pope St. John the Twenty-Third. You know, I can remember my parents always called him Good Pope John. He was loved, beloved Pope, uh, but he knew about that trust in God. You know, he had a wonderful sense of humor, and, uh, you know, he said once to an audience, he said, I wake up in the middle of the night, and I think about something that is going on in the world, and I say, i got to tell the Pope about this, and then I realize, wait, I am the Pope. <laughs> he was an unexpected Pope, elected at an age to be a caretaker, and then he changed everything by calling for the Second Vatican Council and opening the windows of the church he said and letting in new new light new air 
a wonderful, wonderful man who was led by the Spirit. But I always love his, his way of trusting in God's care for him, as he said, when in the midst of all the difficulties of the world, gosh, during his time we were on the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the brink of annihilation, and he wrote that beautiful Pachaman Terrace, Peace on Earth, uh, important for us to reflect on today as we pray for peace in the Middle East. But, but he would say in the midst of all these things, uh, at night he'd said, you know, Lord, it's your church. I'm tired. You take care of it. I'm going to bed. <laughs> and that's the kind of trust I think we also gain from prayer. We have wonderful lessons on prayer today. Let's allow them to change us to be more like God and to trust in God in all that we do. Let's stand and offer our prayers. With confidence in God our Father, we bring these prayers for the baptized, that they may hollow God's name in faithful witness to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. That God's rule may overcome the domination of war and violence. We pray to the Lord. That the bread of charity may be shared among the hungry and the poor. We pray to the Lord. That mercy and reconciliation may restore nations and families. We pray to the Lord. That God's health, that God's help may bring health to the sick. We pray to the Lord and that we may be strong in the face of temptation, we pray to the Lord. We pause now for all of our individual prayers and intentions and for the needs of our world and our faith community. We pray to the Lord. O heavenly one, holy is your name in every generation Hear us when we call upon you in the words Jesus taught us, that the world may share Christ's living bread and that your mercy may abound. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we've received the bread. We offer you what earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we've received the wine. We offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Pope St. John the Twenty-Third, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred actions, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, born of the Vir incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion 
so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be brought together into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Thomas More, John the Twenty-Third, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, trusting in the love of God, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, prepare us. We pray for the eternal joys that as a faithful steward, blessed John the 23rd came to deserve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We go in peace.